it's embarrassing. I was so embarrassed to the point that I couldn't even go and read the comments. How I saw the videos that were posted, people were sending it to. I didn't want to go to the video. I didn't want to see anything because I was already embarrassed because the amount of people were texting me that- Did you cry? Hey family, a quick one. Over 87% of you are consuming this content every single week but are not subscribed. That means you are enjoying the growth conversations but you are not liking, you are not subscribing and you are not sharing it with others. So please, I plead with you, please subscribe so that you can share the love, you can share the growth and you can share this wonderful platform and wonderful safe space with others as well. Enjoy the episode. So on my side, as a private person, I, I consider myself relatively private. Even getting into this space as a podcaster has had weird elements for me because um, it seems like the, the more your numbers, I, I even, even hate calling it numbers because mm. these are human beings behind the screens, but mm. the more the numbers grow, it's the more people sort of want to know you, the person. Keith, how the hell are you handling people wanting to know so much about you? Yo. <laughs> I, it's difficult because I'm generally a private person. Yes. But I think, um, you know, I sort of changed my mindset a bit to like it, with the industry that I'm in. Yeah. It sort of wants you to like be open minded, like uh, don't be afraid to like let people in. But at the same time, that would be dangerous. So for me, I'm, how I'm handling it is that I'm always surrounded by people mm -hmm. most of the time. So mm -hmm. I think it makes it easier for people who want to come into my life, sort of like be introduced in my life. It's not a difficult thing for me to do because I'm already used to dealing with people. Like in Mundo Bandu, like that's yeah, who I am, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But I, I do like to be private as well. But I think I'm starting to really come out of my shell, you know, um, let people more in. Unlike before where I was very private, but now I'm just like, you know what, I don't care. Let me just bear myself, if I can put it like that. Are you not scared of being betrayed, though, being surrounded by people all the time? Because when people have access to you, then they get access to the critical parts of your life. I don't want to lie. It's difficult, and I am afraid. But you know what I've realized? Whether you're private or not, you're always obviously going to have friends. And you know what I mean? Uh, your, your stuff could come out in any case. Sure, you understand sure, what I mean? Sure. I just think you need to have boundaries as well as a person as to how far you let people into your life. You get what I mean? So I think that's the problem. But if you want to, for example, to be in the industry, uh, in DJ or entertainment, you need to go to Bermuda Band because yeah, yeah, you're yeah. going to go to gigs, you're going to find a lot of people. So if you're closed off, like it's difficult for me because it's it's like a transition. Sure. You know what I mean? Like now going to gigs, like I used to be that person, I go to gigs, like immediately I go. But I've learned to like sit stay back, longer, stay longer, interact with people. But yeah, I'm afraid that you just need to put in those controls whereby, you know, you think like you shouldn't let people in in that manner. Yeah. You know what I mean? What like, controls do you have in there? So my number one rule, I don't just bring anyone to my private space in terms of where I stay. I have mm -hmm. people that I know. We meet each other at certain places, in public places, at groups, at Groove. But if you sort of like, I think my friend friend, that's when you really get to know me, get to know my private place, get to know my family, get to know the people that I chill around. But yeah, other than that, yeah, I don't just let anyone like in like that. So I those those are my boundaries. In order for me to let you in more, I think I need to understand you more and understand what type of person you are, like your soul. You understand? You know when you meet someone, you you can tell the vibe with ah, this is the, the type energy. of yeah, you yeah. can feel the energy with yeah. ah, this person is like this, this person is like this. You can't. It's it's those things as a person that you can see in other people, and you sort of have those instincts like okay, this is not a good person. This is a good person. Sometimes you might have blind spots in terms of that. Sure. So that's why I like. Which we all have. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why I like to sort of keep people around me so they can give me their opinions as well. Like, what do they think about this person? My close friends. That sure. Are so do you, do you feel then that the, the the recent occurrence where something very private got spilled into the media? You can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it, you, your private life got spilled onto a gossip page, right? 100%. And that clip that went and trended online 
seemed like something that shouldn't have been video recorded, it means that somebody in that private space that you bring in, because that looked like your personal private home, mm. went and took a video. Yeah. So do you think that the measures you are putting in are actually being effective or not? Or do you think it was a blind spot moment that you had that person around you? It's, I don't even want to say it's a blind spot. For me, I trusted that person so much, if I can say that. And after the whole ordeal, obviously, like I, I had to have a chat with the person like, dude, why would you take videos of the situation? And they told me from what, like their side as to what they're coming from, because it was a very brutal situation. You understand what I mean? So that person took the videos only because to protect me, right? To protect me in a sense of protect because, from what, Keith? because it was a physical alter. It, uh, alteration altercation. altercation okay. sorry yeah it was a physical altercation so i understood what the person was saying that they taking the video in a sense of i have evidence should i want to go to the police you understand what i mean because sometimes he said she said situation I hear you. can be a bit difficult i think the mistake was the person trusting another person because now they're also traumatized within what's happening in the situation so they telling another third party and sending because oh, that person didn't believe what was okay, happening you understand okay. so then he started sending the video to the person that he trusted you understand i i don't know then how the videos got leaked and it not like got to the gossip pages I, I don't know how far it went but for me actually when i looked at the videos because i did because people were sending me the links when i look at the videos that's not the full videos it, it's not the so the funny thing about gossip pages is also like they can narrate the story the way that I want, but sure. that was not the full videos. It's sure. just clips, you understand? So they cut the videos a bit shorter just to, you know, make it look that way. But it's a completely, it was a completely different situation, especially if you watch like the full video. What's the full video? Oh. <laughs> it's a difficult one. You yeah. Know? I didn't want to narrate it in a, in a way that's comfortable to you and protects all the parties that need to be protected. This is not a gossip channel. I'm with you. Yeah. So the video is basically someone taking advantage of me mm -hmm. because they have more power than me. Sure. You understand what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, we live in a country where, like, money talks. Yes. And BS walks. Yes. You understand what I mean? Yes. That person is obviously a powerful person. Like, yeah. I, there's nothing I can do, mm -hmm. even if, like, they would physically abuse me. There's nothing I can do because that person is connected. You understand what I mean? And it would just disappear into thin air. Into thin air. So yeah. that's why my friend took the video because sure. he understood that. I hear you. It's, they it's, were trying to create vid videographic evidence. Exactly. That even if Keith tries and, Try, and, and exactly. takes it to court exactly. or you publish something exactly. at least yeah. you'll be vindicated 100%. Boom, I mean, you're just this lying person 100%. who wants attention 100 percent. and it's not the first time that something happened like that so i think that's why my friend took the videos because when when it happened the first time it's just that my friend wasn't there okay. at that point you understand but he understood because he's a, he, he he was my confident like, yeah, to, yeah. to everything like yeah. about him. To, Dude, I'm going through the situation. I don't know how to go through about it. You know, he didn't advise me. So I think that was his goal. But at the same time, you know, I understand he was taking the videos to protect me. But I think it was sort of malicious mm -hmm. for him to share it with the third party. That's what I don't agree with. Do you not think trauma causes us to not be able to sometimes contain things yeah. and make rash decisions don't you think you should give your friend a bit of grace that they were also just in trauma and scared and wanted to tell someone i'm trying ne? it's hard i'm trying it's hard i'm trying to understand their point of view but i think it's something that they could have consulted with discuss yes it, you understand yes, what I mean? yes but for you to share it with the third party especially such crucial information no one wants to be in the internet when their stuff is being taken you understand no one wants <laughs> things like that to be having a national platform where people are watching you lose everything exactly it's not nice. exactly not only that but it's embarrassing it's embarrassing it's embarrassing yeah it's embarrassing i was so embarrassed to the point that I couldn't even go and read the comments. How I saw the videos that were posted, people were sending it to. I didn't want to go to the video. I didn't want to see anything because I was already embarrassed because the amount of people were texting me. That did you cry? I did at first, but I think my mindset was sort of not focused on that. I was sort of focused on how do I now move, like from the situation. You understand? I think I'm a person of like I always like I'm a problem solver. 
I don't focus on what people are saying. Like I feel like I've been I've been embarrassed enough that that situation for me was actually not that embarrassing to make me like to defeat me okay, if I can okay, put it. Like okay. there's many times. This is not the only time that yeah, you know yeah. the blogs have written about me. I think I got like when I saw it at the same time. I was just like, Ugh, you know what? Let me move. It's another on. story. It's another story. Let yeah. me move on. As much as they think they have their facts correct. They don't. They what, don't actually know what's going on. Why um, are you intentional about not giving a, giving the actual facts, or is it just going to elongate the situation that you're trying to move past from? Hundred percent. Yeah. So I think that's my thing. I don't want to elongate the situation. Like I just want it to die down sure. and move on. You understand what I mean? Like I'm tired of people asking me questions. I'm tired of answering questions. Like. It's tiring for me as well. So I just wanted to like to get to a point where it ends. That's why I'm not responding to anything. Like I just wanted to end. Because the more I respond, the more it gets traction. You give it legs. You understand? Yeah. You you make it grow. So yeah, I yeah. think for me it's better when I just keep quiet and I don't say anything. You understand? That's fair. And That's I fair. know what the truth is. Yeah. So I can't comment when I can see something is not hundred percent. It's not what's actually going on. You understand what I mean? I mean, it's a private thing that happened to me. You understand what I mean? I don't want to be going out there and telling people my sure. business. You understand? Sure. I don't want to be sitting here and telling people my yeah. business of yeah. what happened. You understand what and I that's, mean? And that's absolutely understood. But in, in hindsight, um, uh, without focusing on that particular situation, mm. in hindsight, we, we're, we're supposed to learn from the things that happened to us. Mm. Um, I always say that even when somebody does something to you that's harmful, yeah. sometimes just take three minutes to reflect at how you contributed in the harm, right? I've had Sims Wright there who was speaking about her divorce. And she said, I actually take accountability to some of the reasons why I think my partner became harmful towards me. Not that they have the right to be harmful, mm -hmm. but I could have been a better partner in this way, this way, this way. Yeah. Do you think there are manners in which moving forward as a partner, you can be a better partner? <sighs> I think there is, you know, and no one is perfect. Yeah. No one is perfect. But I think the situation is deeper than everyone thought. Okay, so let me just put it out there. So this whole situation started sort of infidelity. Okay. Not from my side. Okay. From the other party. Sure. A lot of times, like multiple times. Serial cheating. Serial cheating. Yeah. To a point that I got tired and I didn't want to be with that person anymore because if obviously you claim you love me, you want to be with me, why are you going around and compromising my heart? And your health. And my health, yeah. you understand what I mean? And it's it's not just a new thing, it's a relationship of seven years. Oh my you understand, like it's, it's longevity, so you understand what I mean? <laughs> so it's deeper than what people think. That's why I don't wanna entertain it because that person is also close to my heart. Yeah. I mean, you don't just, they can't just escape. Uh, you, you love you, them dearly easy, and it's you're not, still going to love them. Exactly. Yeah. It's not easy to separate from someone I that you've agree. known yeah, yeah. for such a long time. Yeah. You've relied not on that Not just known, loved. Exactly. Yeah. You understand what I mean? So that's the situation. So eventually, I'm, I'm a human as well. I got tired and there was a lot of things, you know, in the relationship as well. I know that I wasn't a perfect person, but that person was also not a perfect person. So eventually I got tired. I was like, you know what? I don't want this anymore. I want to move on. And I think we didn't speak for about a month. We didn't speak for about a month, but obviously we've been together for seven years. We have mutual friends. So it just happened that on that day I had a studio session. Mm -hmm. I had a studio session where I was working on my song and stuff. And then one of the friends of that person that I was with at that time came over and altered the situation. Cause I had, after the month, I had sort of like, you know what, I need to move on with my life. So I met someone treated me okay, I was happy, you understand what I mean? I was happy, so I was sort of, you know, getting to learn that person, it was not even that serious. So when that friend came to studio on the same day, realized that- You've moved on. It looked as it if- It looked like you've moved on. You understand, yeah. but it was just a matter of we getting to know this person, you understand? Because my friends are always with me, so it's sort of like when I get to know someone, my friends are there, you understand? To be like, okay, this this is a good person. Sure. And my friends like the person, like a oh, chill person, very different from what you've had. Yeah, so the situation escalated. The next thing I know, it's knocks on the door. It's knocks on the door, multiple people, multiple people on outside the door. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? I look outside, it's tow trucks, it's trucks, like, when they, like, 
Do you know when you like you feel like you're in a dream? A movie. You're a cast member. You didn't even I audition was, for this movie. Do you understand what I mean? Like I was totally confused. And what confused me the most is how that person acted out of character when they were wrong from the start. And they know they're wrong. They know they're the wrong. Between the two of you, you guys know what is exactly. actually happening. You, we know what is actually yes. happening. But I think the situation is that, that 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 person is financially stronger than I am. You understand? And there, it's the power dynamic exactly, coming into play. Exactly. Yeah. That person is financially stronger. And obviously someone who's financially stronger is going to find ways to sort of control you. You know, they don't want to see you go forward. That's that's my opinion with the relation that I have. Because I went to varsity. I was with that person. That person never wanted to pay my school fees for varsity. I had to find and sort my own way. Like, how do I pay my school fees? That person, as soon as I finished varsity, I started to, like, you know, the whole internship stuff. That person never liked the fact that I was working at all. Like, no, you need to quit your job. I want you to focus, you know, study, get your PhD. It was also, it was as if they are encouraging me to do better, but they're actually delaying me. You understand what I mean? Because <laughs> I had this idea, like, you know, I wanted to study part-time while actually working. No, that's not a good idea. That's not a good idea. What's what? What's what? What's what? And I just see these continuous excuses. Like that's what I, I was seeing. That sort of made me be okay with the decision that I don't want this anymore. Because every time I try to progress, I feel like you sort of pull me backwards. You sort of pull me backwards, and you do things for me, but you're not empowering me. I hear you. You just keep me like. So it's it's keep me dependable yeah keep me dependent on you 100%. so i can take you to diamond walk to exactly. buy something exactly but i can't ask you if hey keith how much do you own your credit exactly. card let me pay it all 100 percent. that is the situation. how much do you owe at school do you do you need something for school we never when, how much do we need to start your business no never at the situation i had and i always had like good business ideas in terms of what i wanted to do you understand what i wanted to do so i think for me even the way that person re reacted at that moment in time is because that person was seeing that I've changed my mindset sure that I don't want to I don't want to depend on you anyone. found yourself I found myself I yeah. don't want to depend on anyone yeah I want to have my own things yeah. I want to say this is me and my power yeah you understand what yeah. I mean I'm not in the business of leeching off people hmm. it was just a situation of that person how can I put it that person met me at my lowest I hear you met me at my lowest and I didn't know my value yeah as I grew inside the relationship, that's when I sort of... You found your value. Found my value that... Self-discovery happened. You understand what I mean? Like, but that person taught me to be so dependent on them that without them, huh. I'm nothing. Huh. And it got stuck into my head, that thing, that I couldn't, like, if I had to do anything, I had to call that person. I'm thinking of doing one, two, three. Then they would discourage me. And I'm thinking, like, are my ideas not good? Like, am I not worth it? You understand? Sure. Just to hold me back. You understand what I mean? But I feel like now I'm such, I'm at a better place. I'm it's, like, it's like I can help you aim for Joba, but don't aim for New York. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I give you something so that yeah. you come, yeah. you come back for more, yeah. but I'll not give you. Like yeah. that person, for me, I think now that I'm sitting after the whole ordeal and everything that happens, I feel like that person was stringing me along. Stringing me along just to be dependent on that person. And yeah, uh, and it it you feel like you, me. you 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 lost who you are, and it's only now that you like this is actually Keith. Exactly, it's only now that I'm finding myself, and I'm loving who I am now. I'm much happier. As much as yes, I'm not going to the clubs and pumping like Ace of Spades like I used to, and you know traveling. That does not define happiness, by the way. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And I realized that. I'm more happy when I'm like, I'm working for myself. I'm yeah. doing stuff for myself. Yeah. I'm, yeah. You know, I can say it's me. Yeah. No one yeah. helped me to get to where I am. Yeah. You understand yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And I'm not scared of falling down because I've been down before. Yeah. I've been down before. I know how it feels. You understand? And when you do things on your own, um, there is purpose attached to that because you make your own mistakes. Exactly. You learn from your mistakes. Exactly. You go through hardships. Uh, exactly. You recently bought a car. You know what it takes now to buy a exactly. car on your own. Yeah. And that, you know, that's that's a beautiful ever. feeling, you know, to connect your car from the dealership. It. I cannot explain it. I know a lot of people were judging me that it's yeah. weird, 
but it's what is practical for me. Absolutely. I'm not going to succumb to people's standards. Guti. Okay, yeah, you were driving a German engine. Now you need to show people that... You oh, know, wanga. Um, it didn't um, fall. No. Yeah. Why must I care what people think? Because... No, they're not there. They're not with me. You understand what I mean? So a quit for me is practical yeah. to drive because fuel efficiency like i'm looking at those things because i'm gigging i'm moving around a lot you are Japan engine, exactly Japan yeah. engine is costly Very. so that's what people don't look at the costly stuff how can i put it like this as much as like i know there's a lot of people that texted me because they know that i i'm educated i have a job but guys corporate can only get you so far sure that's the truth how can i put it like a lot of people are like no don't mis mislead people like people at work don't mislead people you work i'm like yeah guys but i work but my lifestyle is not 50K per month. My lifestyle is about 200K per month. Mm -hmm. You understand? Fine. I'm just going to put in figures. I'm not, uh, I'm not confirming anything yeah. in terms of like, yeah. let's say I'm earning 50K, yeah. right? But I have someone who's financially stronger than me and adding value. And that person is adding, let's say, 150K yeah. in that yeah. month. Yeah. Do you see that my lifestyle is now 200K? Absolutely. So Without it, you realizing it. Exactly. Without me realizing it, my lifestyle is 200K. But because now this person that added value is not there, how do you expect me to drive a German engine again when I'm used to living off 200K? Mm. Now I'm living off 50,000. Sure. Of course I'm going to get a quid. Yeah. Because it's within my, my limits. And your means. And my means. You understand what I mean? And with this quid, for the first time in your life, your heart is at complete peace. Completely. And it's my work. And no one can come and say... I got this for you. No tow truck. It's, exactly. <laughs> no tow truck. Like, I'm not like, even when I drive it, like, I'm happy. Like, I have no issues. Like, I'm happy. Like, I don't, like, Angnandaba with Ban Bazotin. Do you feel that young queer men like yourself should avoid falling in love with older, powerful men? Um, that's a tough one. It's a tough one because I don't want to say no. You know what I've realized about people? People are different from person to person. I, it's not my first time that I've dated an older man or an older person. It's not my first time. I've had different experiences. Mm -hmm. It's just this person showed me a different side to life okay. than I've ever seen with the other people that I, I've dated. You understand what I mean? So I wouldn't say no, they shouldn't. You just need to understand your person, understand if you like this, if you want this, if you don't like this, move. You understand? But I do not advise anyone to go and date older men in order to leech off them. You so, always need to have a plan B. Yes. You always need to. And my plan B was school. In fact, the older man should be plan B. You should have a plan A. Exactly. Exactly. Myself. <laughs> my plan A was school. Yeah. Right yeah. now I'm living off my school yeah. what i did for yeah. work you understand what i mean which he didn't pay for also yes <laughs> i had to find the means and ways of how i pay yeah and i'm with someone who has all them and when i tell you all the money in the world this person would rather buy me a german car than to actually take me to school to varsity and pay for my fees that's what people don't understand yeah i know you should save next time when it it's not easy exactly it's not easy, easy. Exactly. It's not easy. Yeah. They, yeah. they'll get you an apartment they'll get you a car but they won't build you into something that is concrete because then it gives them that risk that you might leave you might leave you might realize actually i don't need this i don't need you you're much older you much older and I'm younger. How about I go for people my age type of vibe? You, you, you get what I mean? Yeah. So I, I think that was the whole situation. But yeah, but I, my advice would be like, date who you want. Like, guys, it's 2024. Date who you want. If you like that person, you like it. You, you like him. I mean, I'm not going to advise him. Say, no, stay away from old men. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you need... Let me be quiet. But yeah, that's basically what I meant. Like, Go for what you want. Like, don't, don't let age or skin color define you. You understand, or define your mindset. That's when you're gonna hold yourself back. Like, put yourself out there. Like, don't look at age or skin color. Or Do you still like believe that. you're going to get a good love? Um, or has this love that you were in hurt you so much that you want nothing to do with love at the moment? I I still believe that I will get good love because um. The person that, you know, I was sort of trying something with at that time, we sort of like rekindled things again after the whole ordeal. And we sort of 
understanding each other. Track, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you understand what I mean? So I do believe that I'll still get love. Like I, I love love. I'm a person mm. who I have such a beautiful soul that I love easily. That's my thing. And I think that's why it's sort of hard for me to let someone in so easily. That's why I have so many boundaries in terms of like how far I let you in. Because I believe in love. I believe, it. I love love. You can put it like that. So I believe that I will get love again. I will get love again. Definitely. It's just a matter of time. The friends you have now after what happened with that particular friend whom I think we can fairly say betrayed you. Mm. Um, how is it helping you navigate? What's your view of friendships at the moment? Is it harder now, even worse, to make new friends? No, it's not hard. It's not hard for me to make new friends. I think, you know, I, I think for me personally, everything happens for a reason. Sure. Like, I think even with coming into the entertainment, entertainment industry, I realize a lot of people... Are fake a lot of people are fake oh you clocked it <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people are fake they're gonna pretend to be a friend yeah they're gonna pretend they support you they're Ooh. gonna pretend they love you mm -hmm. while they actually don't you understand what i mean so i think that i was looking at everything that happened i was like me going into this industry and learning this about people god was trying to prepare me for this sure that's how i think about it that's how i look at it yeah you understand what i mean so i i can't always close off that everyone is going to help the hurt me because not everyone is the same mm -hmm. you understand i just think i need to sort of open i open my eyes a bit more in terms of how i choose my friend but this one is a sensitive one because that person who betrayed me is someone that i've been friends since we were kids mm. that's the difficult part so that's why i'm trying to sort of understand where they're coming from because that person has never in any form tried to do anything malicious i've never detected any jealousy i've never detected any fakeness nothing you understand what i mean so when i look at it i i do think to myself maybe a part of it like he is genuine about it in terms of how things went down he wasn't being malicious you know he's what apologized, i mean apologized i'm assuming he, he's apologized to yeah. say you know what i'm sorry yeah. i didn't you know i didn't so we could that say was not my we intention. could say as i was saying blind spots on his blind side. spot yeah yeah so i i think it was his blind spot on yeah. his side that he yeah. trusted someone that yes. he shouldn't trust. Yes. You understand what I mean? Yes. But obviously, I still need to sleep on it. I still need to dwell on it. I still need to make sure that I'm okay yeah. with my decision of saying, okay, like, I want that person back into my life. I forgive that person. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't hold on anything that has to do with negativity. I don't want it. I forgive that person. I have nothing against that person. I'll never go anywhere and talk ill things about that person mm. you understand what mm. i mean mm. but i am clubbing we move um for me you sound like definitely as a person who forgives but it, it's still hard to forget because also it's very recent yeah um but i also sense how much you love this friend of yours yeah. and how far you guys have come so my two cents is to look into offering them some grace in the near future um maybe have another breakfast date not to be friends again but to remind each other why you love each other and why I believe you've been friends for over a decade if you say yeah, you were yeah. friends since you were kids. Yeah. Um, we mustn't sometimes, just because we found uh, a, 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 a piece of hair in, in water and we throw away the whole yeah. amount of water, yeah. you know, sometimes that piece of hair that we think is contaminating the whole thing, um, sometimes just up, uproot that issue, yeah. fix that issue, work on that issue, takes time. But um, we humans, we, we make mistakes. I hear you, and that sounds that's like sound advice. Yeah. I hear you, and I'll, I'll dwell on it. I'll dwell on it, but I, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. I feel like right now, like, my walls are pretty much closed. Yeah. That's yeah, where I am. Yeah. But I'll, I'll take it into consideration. Keith, you are perceived largely online, and I don't know if it's a perception that you like yeah. or not, because the Keith that I'm sitting across now is completely different to the Keith that I believed was the Keith I saw online, yeah, yeah. which happens a lot when people yeah. come and sit on that couch. The Keith I saw online, I'll be brutally honest with you, slaking, mm. likes things, wants to show off having a good life. It's all about brands. It's all about money. It's mm. all about materialism. Is that the real Keith? To be honest with you, it is the real Keith, and I'll tell you why. That's my motivation. 
I like nice things. Okay. You know, as I feel like as people, we have different drives. Okay. Like you have every time you wake up in the morning, I have something that drives me. Mm-hmm. That's why I like expensive things, expensive stuff, so that every time I wake up, I work mm-hmm. in order to get that. Mm-hmm. You understand what I mean? I'm not going to come in and be like, no, I'm not that kid. I am. I like luxury. Mm-hmm. I like a soft life. You understand what I mean? I don't want to succumb to poverty. I'll never allow that for myself. Yes, yeah. I like the nice life. So for me, putting there, it's not even about bragging. It's because it's the life that I'm currently living. Sure. And every time, even and like, I'm going to be honest, I'm not going to lie. I look at my post and be like, you know what? I need to do better. Actually, I need a Range Rover. Mm, mm. That's a goal that it, it makes me focus. It puts me into focus mode. It makes me work. You understand what I mean? That, that's my drive. Because I like nice things. I'm not going to come here and be like, no, I'm not that type of kid. I don't like... No, I love nice things. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I'm sorry. Um, do you, are you not scared, though, that you're attaching value on who Keith is to these nice things? Because if you're saying you wake up and that is your motivation, then it almost sounds like without things, there's no Keith. I hear what you're saying. And I'm going to tell you straight, that is correct because... Essentially, if I don't have anything, if I don't have something that drives me, then I'm not Keith. I'm not myself. I'm going to be lazy. I'm going to be comfortable sure. with staying. Mediocrity. In a, yeah, yeah, I'm going to be comfortable with staying in a, in a one room. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm comfortable. And you shouldn't. Comfortability is something that is very dangerous. Yeah, yeah, it will hold yeah, you back. Yeah. It will you understand what I said. So you're right. That's why I'm saying like, if you're saying that I don't have that, I'm not Keith. I'm not the Keith that I know. I'm not the Keith that I think has, you know, as a person, you know, you know, your limits, you know, you can get here mm-hmm. as a person, mm-hmm. your internal side will tell you that no, I, I can, can push further this. than this. I man. can push, push, push further than this. I yeah. can get there. Yeah. But if I'm telling myself, ah, it's fine. You know what? I'm fine. Go one room. Then I'm not that Keith. I'm yeah. not yeah. driving that positive side of Keith. I hear you. you understand? I hear you. And you must remember one thing about life. It's in your hands. Mm-hmm. It's in your hands where you go with life and you want to be. It's completely on you. No one else. No one else. You have people out there who don't have parents, but they're still able to make it. Then you get people out there with parents, everything, but they're struggling. They're they not moving forward. They're in drugs. Yes, they d- exactly. Don't know where they're going. It's a mindset thing. Yeah, yeah. Where do you see yourself? Where do you see? How far can you go? But when, if you're going to tell yourself, good, ah, this is where I end, then you are done. And that's it for you. So I'm not going to tell myself, Kuti, yeah, I'm that kid, even in a go one room, Kishap. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're not that kid. I'm <laughs> not that Keith. Keith, you speak about God quite a few times as we are navigating this conversation. Um, what does God mean to you? Yo, God is everything to me. Mm. I come from a religious family. Literally, we have morning devotions, we pray, night devotions, we pray before we sleep. So I come from a godly family, they believe in God, and they've installed that into my mind, that everything that I do, I have to relate to God first. Sure. If I want to move to a certain direction, I have to have a conversation with God to say, God, this is the certain direction that I want to go through, or want to go to. So I need your support and you're going to give me the signs to let me know that I shouldn't go in this manner. You understand? So I'm very religious. I am a Christian. I went to a Christian high school. I'm, God is my everything. So, yeah. Do, do, do you think without God, you wouldn't be where you are? Without God, I'd be nothing. Yeah. Without God for me, I'd be nothing. Mm. God drives me, drives me because I'll always ask him for a sign. Just give me a sign if I should do something like this. Then if he gives me a sign, I'll do it. I do believe in God. And I know that obviously it's a sensitive po- topic because you get some people who are atheists. But for me, I think it's the power of belief mm. on how you believe. The same way that I believe in myself. Mm-hmm. also believe that there is a God. There is a higher power. You understand? This, the life that we're living, what's happening in the world, just didn't come from nowhere. It had to come from somewhere. Definitely. And Definitely. my power drive is God. What is your most consistent prayer to God? Um, I always like to quote Philippians 4 verse, is it 11 verse 4? I forgot it. Yeah, but I can do anything through through Christ Christ who strengthens me. Yeah. Exactly. (laughs) That's, I think that's the 
that's my drive yeah yeah exactly yeah. that nothing it, is absolutely impossible Im- impossible as long as i've got by my side i can do it you've pivoted into music why I've always loved music. Ne? I've always loved music. I've always been crazy about music. I remember all the time, like, I'm a party person. Like, I like to have a good time. Go <laughs> yeah, it's go van. I Like, I like to have a good time. Like, I'm that type of person that we and when we are in a room and I can see it's down, I try to uplift everyone's spirits. Like, guys, why are you guys down? Let's have fun. Let's yeah, enjoy. Yeah. Like, be happy for good stresses. So I'm that type of person. So it started basically, like, with a lot of partying with my friends, they would invite me over to like their house parties and I'd sort of start DJing with my phone. Like I would cue on my phone. I hear like, you, yeah. Play next. Faggy playlist. Exactly, yeah, faggy yeah. playlist. Then I realized that, damn, I could actually do something with this because everyone was commenting on how my good my track list is. Yeah. And you're it's able to ge- find music that people don't know. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And that's my smoking gun. Yeah. I don't go for the norm. Yeah. What, what I think, people have been triggered to be sort of commercial. Sure. So they don't look, like I like in music, I was so shocked at the amount of hits that I've heard with my ears and be like, this is a hit, but no one knows about it mm-hmm. because people are so triggered to be commercial. Yeah. This is it. This is it. Everyone is saying this is a hit. This mm-hmm. is a hit. Mm-hmm. Have your own opinion. Have your own opinion. Don't succumb to society. And, and run with your exactly. own opinion. Run with your own opinion. Even if you look like a madman. Exactly. <laughs> you understand what I mean? So I'm uh, good thing, so I'm going to good thing, pillin' Janin Pilo Yami. And I'm sure, with that said, you looked like a madman. Go to, oh, he's DJing now like everybody else. Exactly. He's DJing like everybody else, but people don't understand that it's something that I have a passion for. Yeah. You understand? But for me at that time, I always had a passion for media, right? But for me at that time, it, it wasn't practical. And I'm a practical person. So that's why I decided, you know what? Before I even pursue anything in entertainment, let me get a degree. (laughs) Then work. Once I'm comfortable or I feel like I'm financially stable to a point that I can move to media, then I'll do it. That's how I got into media. I felt like I was financially stable, that I can move into it without without it hitting my bank account. Because yeah. you must remember something. Everything that you do is an investment. Yeah. It is going to take something away from you. From you first. And that's why you get people who go into media for five years or for, let me put it like this, for five years, for three years, they, there's nothing positive that they can bring to the table that sure. they've said they've done. You understand? Because they don't have the capital for it. You understand? But I had the capital. You understand? I had the capital to say, you know what, to have the connections. You understand? And one thing about South Africans, they love money. <laughs> if you have money, you get in anywhere in South Africa. Yay! Anywhere. If you have money, you have money. Exactly. Open. Those open in South Africa with money. Have money. Yeah? Exactly. And that was my smoking gun. I had the money. I had the money. I was driving the latest cars. I, you, you, you get what I mean? So I was acceptable to most people. Like, I hear you. Come I in. Hear you. Come and DJ. Yeah. Like, yes. DJ you look almost, the part. Exactly. Yeah. I'll DJ. I started DJing two months ago, but I'm already working with the likes of Knife Grand Cafe. There's no way. You started DJing only two months ago? So only two months ago. But Are I already started. Me? I'm telling you. I already started. You started in December. Basically. Uh, basically. But I've had so many gigs. I've worked with so many people. I've DJed on radio because I'm acceptable. Yeah. I, I don't know how to put it. As it's just, I'm a straightforward person. I'm not going to come here and lie to people, but money gets you in everywhere. Money and um, don't take away the brand you've built. 100%. Don't take away the fact that you're a person with numbers and you come with an audience. Mm. So don't take it lightly that you've also built a brand and you were intentional about building a brand. Maybe you, you didn't realize that one day you'll use it to DJ, but you've built a brand, Keith, and give yourself props for that. Yeah, I think I should. Yeah, But, but I don't see like, <laughs> I, I look at myself now and I feel like I'm not there where I know I could be. Imposter well, syndrome. Exactly. Yeah. I'm not there where, like, I know my potential. I yeah. do more. I'm mm-hmm. not there yet. I'm not there yet. Only now I'm starting because I've unleashed the inner power in me. Because I don't have someone who's holding me back. Someone who's continuously telling me that without me, you are nothing. <laughs> you understand what I mean? Yeah. So now I've unleashed someone. No one can come and tell me, Guti, when are you not going to do this? You unleashed a higher key that exactly. is unstoppable. I'm going to tell you same time, Guti, <laughs> you understand? I'm going to do it myself. Yeah. When I fail... 
remember failing is the first attempt in learning sure it doesn't mean that sure. you can't do it it's the first you can do something and fail try it again keep pushing keep pushing you'll get there in fact i've said this a few times that so many people have a bad relationship with failure maybe it's because of how failure has been stigmatized exactly. as this thing that is crippling exactly failure is just a, a moment where you're like oh I shouldn't have done it that way. Okay, let me try another one. Yeah, you learn from mistakes. It. It's like, oh, now I know which way not to go. Exactly. Okay, let's try that way. Exactly. Oh, that beat didn't work on that song. That let, me try let me try these number of beats per exactly. minute. Like, yeah. that's all it is. And you wouldn't know that it doesn't work had you not failed. Exactly. You don't learn. In How can I put this? You learn so much from failing. Hardly ever from success. I've failed <laughs> so many times. Yeah. So many times. But from my failures, I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot from my failures than I've learned from my success. Of course. To be honest. Yeah. Because success is almost a comfort zone. Exactly. You feel like I've arrived. Yeah, I've, I've arrived. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. When you're comfortable, like, ah, I did it. I want yeah. to. But when you fail, then you, then you learn from your failings. Then you put in controls. Then you look at what I can do better, what I should redo you understand what i mean then you become a better person definitely definitely you're in studio at the moment what sound are we going for what are we going to expect yo mina <laughs> <laughs> me like yeah. i love a good beat yeah. like i like a good beat like it's cool punje like that's how i am like so my sound is i'm a piano without a doubt mm -hmm. that's what i love that's what i enjoy and i feel like with with I've been to so many clubs so many times. So I feel like I also understand the demand. The culture and the, the demand. The culture. Yeah. So people love Skicha. They love Skicha. Everywhere you go, people love Skicha. Like, uh, I've DJed in places where they've never played Skicha before. But when I play Skicha, the like, reaction that yeah. I get from people. Yeah. Because it's, it's generally a nice, I'm a be honest, generally a nice genre. Like, it's so fun. Like, you forget about your problems. So that's what I'm going for right now. But I also do have a bit of a touch when it comes to hip hop. But my ultimate love is Skija. Like, yeah, yeah. any day, like, I listen to Skija every day. And when are we getting the music? Okay, so currently I have a song that is finalized, yeah. oh, which took forever to do it is like, failing and learning and yeah <laughs> like, i thought like hey, two days is the deal yeah. like, damn so across nights i like we camp we camp and we're fixing the beat we're mastering we're doing this and it's something that i didn't know how to do mm, mm, but mm. because i have a, a learner's mindset i want to learn how to do it i've learned a lot i never even knew how to use fl studio mm -hmm. but now i know how to use fl studio i know a lot of things i basically created the song mm -hmm. from start to finish so yeah, so the song is uh, currently it's on TikTok. Like people are sort of doing a trend to it. They're doing dances. We've sort of promoted it with the guys that I'm working on the song with, and there's a girl as well on the vocals. Yeah, so we're sort of like promoting it to see how people testing are the waters, testing the waters. But the reaction that I've got, people like it. Mm -hmm. Like when I play it, my sets, people like it. I haven't received any. Like, ah, this is a boring song type mm, of vibe. Mm, mm. So I think I'm looking to release it maybe like towards the end of March. Oh, okay. Yeah, so like yeah. I'm going to be patient. I'm going to let people like guess what it sounds like. Then yeah, I'm gonna yeah, because you only play it. snippets, right? Exactly. Yeah. And you know what I like about my song? Because that's not something you'd expect from a queer person. <laughs> 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 it's not something that would... And I feel like that's something that people don't understand, that within the queer community, there's deeper, there's levels. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, there's levels mm -hmm. of different queer people of course of yeah, course exactly of course so. do you think it's limiting to be queer in this industry to 100 percent yeah 100 percent no clubs wants a someone who's known as queer to be playing at the club no ways why it's the industry that we're in yeah there's a lot of homophobia in yeah. this country yeah there's a lot of homophobia but there's also an acceptable level of homophobia of homophobia like okay we know you're queer you into this but are you acceptable because you're not too much Ish. we live in that industry but i think as a person you just need to be self-aware don't listen to what anyone says but i feel like we're gonna get to that point where like you know a lot of things are acceptable mm -hmm. a lot of things we don't go by society standards or the norms you understand what i mean but yeah i feel yeah I, I feel sometimes I do get to gigs and I can yeah. see the homophobia. Like some people are like, why is he wearing makeup? Or why is he yeah. like this? Or why, why is he like, like that? that? Yeah. But then they started look, they start, then they realize they get to know me and be like, 
actually it's just a guy mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. understand what i mean mm -hmm. so they don't look at me like that so it's also almost as if i'm acceptable because i can play like at straight places like they don't have a problem i can yeah. play a full set without any problems people dancing to my gigs i don't have it's so sad that we have straight places we don't have human places. It should we just don't. be human places throughout the country. We don't. But unfortunately, especially in the club, club culture scene, Shisa Nyama yeah. scene, it's very straight. It's straight. And the reason I'm calling it straight pit places is because a lot of queer people wouldn't go because they don't feel safe. Sure. It's not a safe space for them. They feel like they'll be violated. They feel like they'll be violated. Someone is going to attack them physically. Yeah. That you get queer people trying to create the safe places only that they know or they only understand. that they can go to yeah them. that's why you find that you get to a places like it's only like queer people because they feel safe in that space because of the homophobia they're not allowed into certain places unless of course if you have money then you're acceptable mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. ah you ah, <laughs> know yeah, 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 yeah no yeah, that's how yeah. they look at it so it's it's weird how people think and you know how people can be touched about how other people live their lives it's so weird that you attach Gutumundu Pilimpuloyaku as if it's gonna have an effect in your life. Yeah, yeah. And your well being. So, but it's the world that we live in. What can we do? Do you think mom and dad is proud of who Keith is right now? Okay, I don't have a relationship with my dad. Like, my dad is still there, but we not. Mm -hmm. You understand what I mean? It's a sad story. Yeah. <laughs> I, also, <laughs> I also, I don't know if it's because. Okay, I guess it's because. Uh, okay, let me not mention it. But yeah, my mom passed on when I was in high school. When I was in high school, so from high school, I basically had to fend for myself. So that's where I get the energy from, like to hustle, to work. Because I started it at a young age, like hustling and doing things for myself, yeah. So I definitely think, think my mom is proud. Definitely. In terms of where I am. Do you think she's a garden angel? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Who I am today, the person that I am today, it's that woman she built me yeah. to become this person that yeah. I am. she installed those things in me that when I do something I'm like no my mom taught me this this I could do this you understand what I mean so yeah she's definitely proud that's what I believe I believe that uh, not just I many of us do believe my mother's late by the way yeah. she passed away in 2015 and be beyond your faith I do believe that people whom we loved dearly um, and have a special place in our hearts, whether they can hear us or not. But I do believe that there is value in speaking in a way as if that person was there. 100%. Um, right now, if you had a chance to speak to your mom, just 30 seconds, what would you say to her? I'd like, I think I'd say to her, thank you for everything that she has done to me. Thank you for her believing in me mm. and installing the fact that I'm worthy, I'm important, and I'm just like everyone else. I'm not, I'm not different to anyone. And I can get into any space yeah. that I want to get in as long as I have the right mindset. So the, for me, that's currency. As yeah. much as she didn't leave me with millions and billions in the bank account. But for me, the knowledge that she gave me is so much worth more than any money that I could give it in the world. Because I'm using that knowledge right now to build myself and to make money. Keith Mamba, you've gone through a lot of humiliation on the internet. At the same time, you've, you've had many wins that people have seen on the internet as mm -hmm. well. And I really pray that as you pivot into the media industry, you're able to break new barriers. Because as you're saying, you are challenged by queerness. You are challenged by people um, trying to know your past. There's blogs, there's mm -hmm. this and that. But I really hope in your journey with God, as you say you have a relationship with God, you seek him deeper so that you find alignment in who you are. You find a more a better place of peace because I can see you working towards being in peace, um, better place of mental health, and you really move on from this past relationship that you were in that you felt like took you away from who you are. Yeah. So, from us at Engineer Your Life, I'd like to thank you for joining us. It's been brilliant, and thank you for sharing such a vulnerable story with us. Um, we don't take that lightly. No, it's, it's a pleasure. Thank it's you pleasure. so much. No. Thank you for putting me in the seat in this hot seat <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's very warm <laughs> yeah, it is warm like yeah. yeah it is warm but yeah thank you so much and you know i think I, I think number one for me i didn't want to leave any bitter taste in someone's mouth that like i'm a leecher like a yeah. leecher of people i that's why i encourage people use your brains sure. use anything your talent use it 
do not rely on anyone but yourself. That is got nothing message. further to say. I'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>